Hello, everyone. Thank you for staying for the Q&A. My name is Adam Cook, and I'm a programmer here at TIFF. Before we get started, just a reminder that if you have a question, please raise your hands as high as you can, speak as loudly and clearly as you can, and I'll repeat the question so that everyone in the theater can hear. Now, please join me in welcoming back to the stage the director of Call Me By Your Name, Luca Guadagnino, and stars <laughs> Army Hammer and Timothy Chalamet. Thank you. I, I want to invite the producers, Peter Spears and Marco Morabito, to join us. I think Howard Roseman is somewhere in the room. Where is he? There he is. Luca, if we could start with you, could you talk about the origin of this project? Uh, I think Peter should talk about the origin of the project because he is the origin of the project with Howard. Where is Howard? Howard's coming up. He's coming. Howard. Um, well, we read, uh, we first got galleys of the book, uh, 2007, Howard and I, and uh, optioned the material and almost immediately uh, spoke with our good friend Luca Guadagnino and brought him on board to help uh, shepherd this uh, into what you saw today. And from that point, we had amazing Italian producers and Brazilian producers and French producers, and it really was a whole kind of a global effort. For Timothy and Army, could you talk about, you have amazing on-screen chemistry in this film. Can you talk about how you prepared for the roles? Bo both of you can answer. Uh, it, it was such a special and unique experience because we shot it in a little tiny town in Italy called Crema, and Timothy and I were basically the only Americans there. Nobody else spoke English, so if we wanted to do anything on the weekends, we were doing it with each other. We were going to restaurants, we were spending a lot of time together, we were discussing scenes, we were rehearsing a lot. It was really kind of like an immersion. We just spent all day filming, and then all night together, and then we would be together on the weekends, and it just it developed into like a, a genuine friendship that we still have to this day. You know, I mean, it's, it, it, was, it was a really special experience to get to do it, especially with someone as talented and special as Timmy. Special, I like that. A lot of specials in there. <laughs> um, yeah, just to add, I mean, I agree with everything he said, and it was Luca's, you know, genius to get us out there a month early and to be sequestered in this small town in Italy, so it's not the experience you would have shooting on a stage or shooting in, like, a center of uh, industry, so you really, I don't know, it was easy to uh, ingratiate in the tone of the film and the tone of the, the town and and of Andre Osman's source material. Um, and I don't, I don't think it would have been the same if we didn't have that month in advance to uh, really get to know one another. Luca, the film has an amazing visual style and you worked with a particularly talented cinematographer. Could you talk about collaborating on the look of the film? Well, uh, we wanted to keep it simple as much as possible. We didn't want to put too much technical filtering or effort against the story and the characters. And so with Sayun Bu, we, we, we tried to adapt ourselves to the light and the, and the, and the place. And uh, we used 35 millimeters camera and we shoot with only one lens, which was 35 millimeters. The entire movie was shot with only one lens. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I have to kudos to Sayun Bu. Sayun Bu Mukdi Prom is, the masterful director of photography of uh, uh, Uncle Bon Mi Recalls His Past Lives and uh, Tropical Malady, really one of the greatest al alive cinematographers. And we shot in May and June, and we really had more than three quarters of our schedule with heavy rains, but you don't see them apart from the moment in which it rains in the movie. And the mo the, that's a testament of how great is Sayun Bu, how he created this illusion of real light through artifice. Questions from the audience? Yes, in the hat.
You're asking the question me about is this? about uh, differences between the book and the choice of the songs in the film. Well, uh, the, uh, the Andrea Asima novel is a masterpiece. It's a great, great, great novel. And uh, um, I think the translation from novel to film, uh, uh, when it comes to great books, it has to be about uh, trying to translate the essence of the book, but not the letter of the book, because uh, those are two different mediums. And so for me, it was important that we were trying to keep Asiman's spirit alive in the film, but to also make it our, the story our own. And I wanted the movie to be in the present time, where the book is a recollection, it's a memory, and it's about someone telling you his memories in a large amount of time. Uh, but I thought it was much, much stronger for, for the film, for your experience, to be immersed in the now and then of what happens during that summer. So that was our attitude toward the translation. The songs, uh, can we make a applause to Sufjan Stevens? He, he, he's such an amazing artist and I, I feel privileged because it, it is literally uh, a desire. I, I, I love his music and I, I, I wanted to have a sort of an other voice that was not just the voice of the film and the, and the director and the script, but a separate artist voice to add to the film from now because the film is set in the 80s and I think that Sufyan I felt he was a real thing for a movie like this and the, f the, the metaphors in his lyrics and the voice that he has and the music, it's so pure that <clears throat> I felt this could be really resonating. So I wrote him a letter and he replied. <laughs> and I asked one song and he gave me three. So it's good. Any filmmakers in the room who wants to do the same thing with other great artists, you should do it because they are, sometimes you, they give you good surprises, yeah. I remember that we got the songs while we were shooting, remember? And we played in my living room and we were like, wow, really those songs are amazing. Like they are like above the average and it's wow. Yeah. The question is uh, for Timothy about when there's so much material to draw from for such a rich character from the book. Do you use the book as a source for? Yeah, I really like that question because you you know the first obligation is to be truthful to what's in the source material because as people have said here tonight, that holds a very special place in a lot of people's hearts, including Peter and uh, you know Howard who optioned the rights to the book. So I think the process for me was you know understanding or having a general understanding of what the arc is or the character, but in those moments where there is deep confusion or maybe a scene on paper isn't making sense, the real privilege of working with deep source material, whether fictionalized or non-fictionalized, is that when you're in that rut, you can just go in there and, and, uh, and there's, like, <laughs> there's like chapters of source material to pull from. So um, it, it wasn't all the time, but it's a real luxury to, uh, to be working on a, uh, I guess a, f uh, a film that, that, uh, that, uh, that's based on a book or any sort of uh, pre-existing property. We have time for two more questions. Front row of the balcony, yep. The question is about the editing in the film and how it felt like a collection of memories. Uh, well, uh, the editing of the movie was quite simple. Like we, we shot between May and June and we had the, our movie done by July, which is extraordinary because usually it takes a year for me to edit a movie. Uh, but it was, as I said before, very simple. Very, we, we really wanted to make it the movie as, uh, as direct and as close to these characters as possible. So it, rose to itself in a very, and I work with the same editor since 25 years and we have, 
we had, be, we had been working on the script together when you have to do your shooting draft. So I was really into it very much. So it was really simple. Yeah. One more question. Yes. Oh, sorry. It was in the glasses. Yep. We'll do both. The question is about dropping the toilet flushing scene from the book. Why did you drop the toilet flushing scene? <laughs> because uh, Johnny Waters has already made his masterpiece with Odorama. <laughs> so. And yes, please. Easy, question easy is about time. working with James Ivory James on the script. James is a friend of ours, so it was uh, quite easy. Yeah, it wasn't e not easy nor difficult, it was natural. <laughs> well, thank you so much for bringing your film here to Toronto. Thank you guys very much. <laughs>